I have a compulsive disorder, a disorder that I didn't know had a name for more than 20 years of my life. This disorder dominated everything about me. And I'm going to tell you a bit about that story and what I've done to cope with that and transform it and turn it into something beyond anything I could have imagined. This is my face. These marks and wounds on my face are not acne. These are wounds I've created. Compulsive skin picking is a complex physical and mental disorder. It affects people in many ways, and in my personal experience, from the age of six or seven, this disorder became a complex part of how I functioned every day. I would pick the skin around my fingers as a young child. Skin picking is a very normal thing for pretty much every human. But some of us develop this in a much more complex way. And that skin picking escalated. I would pick my back, my face, my fingers, my chest, the heels of my feet. I would wake up with blood on my bed sheets. It absolutely dominated how I would dress. The clothing I would wear was absolutely hidden and disguising the marks on my body. I didn't own a T-shirt for 10 years. But part of my story is theatre. So I studied theatre, and this is part of how the dichotomy in my life has led me to this place. Studying theatre means you stand up in front of people and you present the body, you speak. You share your stories and the stories of others. But I had marks and wounds all over my body and was very, very, very frightened of letting those things be seen. Skin picking changed for me dramatically when I was 30. So between the age of 6 and 30, this disorder was a daily part of my struggle. The guilt and shame surrounding this disorder is absolutely enormous. I didn't tell anyone in my life aside from family members, that this was even something I was struggling with. And at the age of 30, I signed up to do a master's in dance. Quite a challenging thing for someone with skin picking. It was a life-changing moment. We were encouraged to take a video camera into a dance studio and record pedestrian movement in the first week of that course. And I did the exercise. When I turned the video round and played it back, I lasted fractions of a second before my hands went up to my face and I started picking up my face. Over the course of two hours, with streaming tears falling down my face, I watched my disorder on the screen. And something occurred to me. Skin picking has become a dance in my life. The repeated movement patterns of this disorder are like a dance. So skin picking is common. One in 25 have this disorder. This is a statistic I discovered at that point. I googled skin picking. First time I'd ever looked for this information online. And all this information came up. And I realized this is a very common disorder. There are probably people in this room who know what I'm talking about. You may have heard of the hair pulling disorder where people pull out their hair because they're stressed or anxious. This is the sister disorder to that. So what do you do? Now, medication can really help. CBT, um, cognitive behavioral therapy, is also a route that you might go down if you're having treatment for this disorder. And these can be extremely valuable. But I didn't access those things. I started making artwork about what the disorder felt like. What I'm about to show you is not something that came easily. This took me several years. And in fact, it's been 10 years of making artwork about the disorder. For me, this is what my skin feels like every day. Even standing here now, my skin feels like it has a texture on it that I need to pick off. It's a very strange thing to describe to people that don't know what that feels like. And I started reimagining my body. Slowly, over 10 years, I started working with a camera. And I was coming from a dance and theatre tradition, not from an art tradition. And these images began to help me reimagine and reclaim the skin that had damaged and distressed me for so long. I started to work with galleries and exhibitions, but life changed very dramatically for me in 2014. Life threw me a curved ball. I'd worked full-time, and I was 
tired, I wasn't sleeping, I was very stressed, I was very anxious. My skin picking returned very badly. So art, although it was helping me, it's not a cure, and it wasn't stopping it from happening completely. And I had an accident at home. I fell down the stairs. The next morning, I got up and went to work. I was bruised. I felt really shaken. And I had an out-of-body experience at my computer. I now know that's a dissociative state that's associated with severe depression and chronic anxiety. I saw a doctor the same day, and I was signed off work. Ten months of sick leave followed. I went from being a professional, functioning human being to someone in a dressing gown who couldn't leave the house. All those mental health statistics you hear about happened to me. People left my life. People stopped calling. People didn't know what to say. And around the same time, I was asked to make artwork by a gallery that I'd made a connection with called the Bethlehem Gallery. It's the world's oldest psychiatric hospital, and I'd connected with them through the skin-picking artwork. The artwork I made saved my life. I was asked to make work for the Anxiety Festival at the point where I had the biggest anxiety attack of my life. What is that? Is that serendipity? I don't know. I took the challenge, and this artwork a year later was shown in a solo exhibition in Los Angeles in a hospital. This changed my life, saved my life. And around the same time, Someone bought me a box of charcoal. And this is the thing I'm now known for, which is crazy. I started drawing. I hadn't really drawn since I was a teenager. And drawing has become the best tool to help me with this disorder. If there's no cure for skin picking, and I feel it physically in my body every day, everywhere I am, drawing shifts that energy. And one day, I was on the train drawing in a sketchbook, and I'd got a job in North London, so I was commuting from South to North London. It's a two-hour commute, and panic attacks were still happening, so I was having to battle that on the tube. Tube is not easy in the best of times. And one day, my sketchbook ran out. Another moment of serendipity. The carriage was littered with newspapers, and I felt the panic attack rising. I looked to my fingers, and I was picking my fingers. And I thought, if I don't do something, my hands are going to be bleeding by the time I get to work. I picked up a newspaper, and I doodled on it. I liked it. I shared the photo on social media. Loads of people went, what's this graffiti? This is so cool. I left it on the train. I just I left it on the seat beside me. When I got on the train on the way home, I did the same thing, because I still didn't have a sketchbook. That has turned into something I do every single day. On the way here today, I gave away 20 drawings to strangers in the carriage. I realized very quickly that the act of drawing in a public place on a newspaper is a bit odd. People look, people wonder, and you know that thing of people checking out what you're doing over your shoulder on the tube? I could feel that. As a person with a performance background, it's, it's very present. So I started leaning across and saying, would you like this drawing? People don't know what to do. Lots of people say no. No, thank you. Oh, would you, would you like this drawing, person next to me? Yeah, it's free. I'll have it. Yeah, I'll have it. <laughs> Very quickly, I realized that the person that didn't get the drawing is then a bit sad and wants the drawing. So then I do another drawing. You do want a drawing, don't you? And I pass them the drawing. So this accumulating a creative moment through an act of drawing becomes a moment of connection. Why are you drawing? Oh, I'm drawing because I've got a mental health problem and I pick my fingers really badly and actually I get panic attacks. Often, many, many times a day, the person declares something of their own experience of mental health. Little conversations about mental health start happening. Those are moments of connection. And I realized that for all those conversations I have with the person that gets the drawing, there's another 15 or 20 people that witness it. So I started carrying a postcard, because I can't talk to them all. <laughs> but I can pass out a postcard around the carriage. The postcard says, I have a compulsive disorder. What you're witnessing is about mental health and recovery. This is what is helping me right now in this moment. But it's also an act of kindness. 
I don't need the drawings, I just need to do them. Londoners started getting involved, sharing their drawings on social media, and it starts to spread this message, this spread this message of recovery. And then suddenly, invitations to do this in other cities start presenting themselves. So in January, I went to the M1 Singapore Fringe Festival, and I gave away 600 drawings in 10 days to people in the carriages, to people at universities and hospitals who are studying psychology, looking at mental health, trying to think of different ways to access recovery routes for people living with conditions such as mine. Skin picking gets very little press. Many people suffer. I meet people every single day on the train and on the tube who say, is that a thing? I do that. I have that. That moment of connection might change their life, and in many cases it does. I get emails through my website or people contacting me on Twitter thanking me for speaking out about the disorder. I'm up to 15,000 free drawings. That's 15,000 conversations and 15,000 individuals, but many more that have received the postcard or been in the carriage. Acts of kindness become something much bigger for me and for them. It's been picked up by the press, and for me, that's another moment to talk publicly about this disorder. To think that I couldn't even wear a short sleeve top like I am today, 15 years ago. That moment of recovery becomes a much bigger message, that if you are suffering, ways of getting better are possible. And they're not always the route that takes you through medication. And I speak out every time I get asked, so today is no different. It's terrifying to stand up and talk about this disorder every time because it exposes something that I've lived with and struggled with. But I don't know who in this audience or who watching may need to know it. They're not alone, and this disorder doesn't need to completely stop your life. It's not a cure, but for me, I'm in collaboration with this disorder This is my performance collaboration every single day. If I am never cured, I'd rather have a comfortable life with this disorder. And this image is the last one I want to show you. This is the image of my fingers drawing, quite obviously. It's also the position my fingers used to pick my body in. That pinched, tight position is so familiar to my body, but every time I'm drawing, it's a mindful, gentle, calm act and it reimagines that disorder into something positive for me and for others. Thank you.